Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 127 of our trip around the United States. Now today, we've changed things up a little. Because of how long we took in Casey, this morning is gonna happen. Originally, when I put this on the agenda, I'd always intended to skip it because it was a lot of time for what I'm planning to do today and the juice just wasn't gonna be worth the squeeze. But since we put ourselves a half day off kilter from all the time we spent exploring Casey, that freed up just enough time this morning that we can execute this part of the plan. So right now, we're shooting from the banks of the Mississippi River here in Chester, Illinois, the home of Popeye the Sailor Man. And like Riverside celebrates being the birthplace of Captain James Tiberius Kirk, Chester is very proud to be the birthplace of Popeye the Sailor Man. Everywhere you go in town, there are statues celebrating the characters and the history of the cartoon show. The reason I had not originally intended to do these geocaches is because they are nine and eight stage multis respectively. I had only put them on the list so I could check out a few of the statues on my way to town, then I was gonna bounce. But now that we have the time, we're gonna go to every single stage, check out the statues, answer the questions, and with a little bit of luck, be able to get these nine and eight stage multis respectively. If we still have enough time after that, we're gonna go ahead and hit up the library as well and go find the geocache hidden in there. I expect we're gonna spend all morning in Chester before we get on the road for our miles. Our miles for today are going to stick for the original 300 miles that we have on the agenda. Of that, we're already well past a third of the way through starting off here in Chester. So from what we've got left after Chester, it's mostly just traditional grabs through the counties until we get to the end of our day at the Garden of the Gods. And hopefully we'll get there with some sunlight and be able to see some amazing stuff. So as you can tell, Aichan is ready to get out and get moving. So let's get out there and find some of these Popeye characters. Let's go. Welcome to Chester, Illinois county seat of Randolph County, sitting on a bluff above the Mississippi River, looking over into Missouri. With a population of around 7,500, Chester may seem like any other small town sitting along the bank of the river. It is this spot along the river, though, that helped to put this town on the map. Because this small town along the Mississippi River is home to Popeye the Sailor Man. Or, more accurately, it is the home to Popeye's creator, Elsie Seeger. Popeye made his first appearance in the Daily King feature comic strip, Imbel Theater, on January 17, 1929. The comic strip was already on its 10th year when Popeye was introduced, but this one-eyed sailor quickly became the leading character. Although Seeger passed away in 1938, the character lived on through the writers with the Thimble Theater, who continued the legacy of Popeye. Above all else, Popeye is considered a superhero in my eyes because he convinced several generations of children to eat their spinach. It is a regular staple in the comic strips and the cartoons that when Popeye is in trouble, he can eat a can of spinach to gain superhuman strength. That strength would allow him to overcome many problems, generally stemming from Bluto, one of the main villains of the cartoon. And, like many other children who grew up watching Popeye the Sailor Man, I too enjoyed my spinach thinking of growing strong like Popeye. As you tour around the town of Chester, there are many geocaches based on Popeye the Sailor Man and the statues spread around town. The only way to find the geocache hidden inside of the local library is to take a good look around at the statue outside to answer several questions and get the call number for this book. Knowing I am unable to pass up either a statue or a good library geocache, this was a must for me, even if I could not complete the Maltese in town. Following our quick trip into the library, we spent the entirety of our morning exploring the town of Chester, one mural and one statue at a time. The yellow jacket statue in front of the high school was the only one we found that wasn't related to Popeye. Even this statue of Sherlock Holmes, the only one in the U.S., bears the face of Popeye's creator, Elsie Seeger. That very unique statue stands in the center of a concrete magnifying glass and was dedicated on Seeger's 125th birthday in 2019, making it one of the most recent statues in town. Interestingly, the most prominent memorial in town is not the Veterans Memorial. It is the memorial dedicated to the firefighters and police who serve in the line of duty every day. But yes, of course there is still a Veterans Memorial in town too. And although smaller than many of the ones we're used to seeing, it holds a prominent place right here in Gazebo Park next to the Spinach Can Collectibles, which is home to the official Popeye fan club at the 1875 Opera House. 
And while Popeye may be quickly approaching his 100th birthday, he is far from getting old, especially in the eyes of the residents here in Chester, Illinois. For nearly 30 years, the statue of Popeye stood alone until the residents of the town came together to create a statue of Wimpy in 2006. Every year since then, the city has unveiled a new statue at their annual Popeye and Friends picnic event. This picnic is hosted after Labor Day, normally in September or October, and features rides, food stands, music, fireworks, and a parade. People come from all over the United States to join in on the celebration. And if you happen to live in Illinois or close enough to get here, it sounds like an event that is definitely worth attending. Currently, there are about 20 statues to be found on the trail. But knowing that there is a new one unveiled each year means that no matter when you come to visit, there's always going to be interesting things to see here. In addition to the letterbox of the library and the two multi-geocaches that bring you to many of the statues, there are also four adventure labs that bring you to 20 different stages centered on the statues and the museums. Using the Adventure Lab stages, it is actually very easy to track through each part of the multi to get the answers needed. And we could not have enjoyed any more the opportunity to tour through each one of these characters or the opportunity to share them with each of you. With a multi like this and no checker and lots of room for error, you can never be sure that you've got the final stage until you've got the final stage. After taking on nine stages, this is quite a victory. Oh, that's cool. Check that out. Yeah. Darth Vader ring. Cool. Two for two. A nine stage and an eight stage multi, plus four adventure labs and the library. And I got a few traditionals in town too. So that's like 25 finds in about four hours. Doesn't feel like I did much because the adventure labs don't really count in my brain, but apparently it was quite a bit. After spending all morning playing around with Popeye and friends, we finally got on the road once again. Our route for the day was all country miles with a few finds scattered in here and there. Although many of the geocaches we found on our way out of Chester today were easy parking grabs, a few required a bit more work than others. But really now, what is a day of geocaching without a little stroll in the woods to locate a lock and lock? Too bad this one appears to have lost its water tightness. It's a little wet in here. Whew. With a cedar tree on the right and a cedar tree on the left, they could have made this a tough one. Fortunately, they were generous and decided not to. It's very thorny in here. My kind of cedar tree hide. Mag approved. Making our way toward the end of the day, we happened to stumble across a few small veterans memorial, the first of which was in Steelville. And we almost missed the one in Omaha altogether, tucked in between the trees like this. But it's hard not to see a tank when you're driving down Main Street, even if it doesn't have a cache listed on it. Well, darn. We just barely missed the Garden of Gods. We're just outside of the area now, but it's become clear that by the time we get there, that sun's gonna have finished setting, and we're not really gonna be able to see anything. To be honest, I never actually expected to get to see the Garden of the Gods today. With it at the end of the day's plan, I kind of always figured it'd be dark when we get here. So we're actually running quite a bit ahead of schedule still. We're gonna use that time and move a little forward into tomorrow's plan, but we're still counting this as only one day ahead because we're definitely not gonna be operating at a half day kilter. Didn't work for me then, I'm not gonna let it work for me now. We had a great time this morning touring Chester. That was another thing that I thought would never actually happen until we ended up spending as much time as we did in Casey. Once we had that half day, I knew we could take that other half day and use it to go get some Popeye history. We hope you guys enjoyed exploring Chester with us. It really was a good time getting to explore the town, one statue at a time, and this nine and eight stage multis were made 
so much better by the fact that there were adventure labs on top of them. Not only did that give me a way to track all of the locations as I went, but it also means we got fines for every stage. And that, that's pretty cool. Go ahead and drop into those comments and let me know what your favorite Popeye character is and or what your favorite Popeye statue was. Like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails.